What's going on everyone? This is Mitch. A good Thursday morning to you all. Hope you all are having a great start to your day and getting up and feeling great this morning. I feel a lot better this morning than I did yesterday morning. I just didn't have the energy that I wanted to have yesterday, but feeling a lot better this morning. Hope you guys are feeling great too. Got you a weather update on what's going to potentially happen specifically for today, May the 19th. And, uh, you know, the main topic today is going to be severe weather. There's going to be two areas. One area is some, an area we really need to watch, and that's for the north central U.S. areas like Iowa, Wisconsin, and maybe surrounding portions of other states surrounding them states. So we also are watching for severe weather all the way from portions of Missouri all the way to the uh, Carolinas. A little bit of a zonal flow setting up with some energy could, that could certainly spark some severe storms today. It's just whether or not they fire or not. So that's what we're, we're going. That's what we're going to talk about in this morning's video. So if you guys have not subscribed, definitely consider doing that. And as always, like the video if you do like it. I haven't mentioned this, uh, you know, a lot, a lot lately. But if you ever consider joining my channel, it's just a way to support what I do monthly. I got 21 incredible members, trying to get to somehow 30 by the end of June. So about midsummer or so, I'm trying to get to 30. So just a great way to support what I do. And I appreciate people who just support me regardless by viewing my content. So if you guys got anything that I can pray about, please put it in the comments below. Gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. So, let's talk about what's going on. This is for today, for your Thursday. You got this huge slight risk that's extending, you know, from Missouri all the way to the coastal areas of the care, certain parts of the Carolinas. This includes Wilmington. This includes Charlotte, Raleigh, uh, almost all the way into Columbia. But you know, the one thing I'm wondering about here in the Carolinas and even into areas of Tennessee is if storms even do fire you've actually got some storms going on right now in and around kind of the Asheville area hill has already been reported but does any additional uh, convection really fire up the day if it does there is a threat for damaging winds and some small hail for sure so that's something we need to watch out for a little bit further into this area you got that tornado threat five percent risk in this region right here including areas of southern Illinois, far southern areas of Indiana, areas of Kentucky, and then a very small section of Missouri and Tennessee. I think the dynamics will overlap the best in this region with this mid-level zonal flow for a tornado threat in this region right here. But if you back this up, you got the slight risk up for this huge area, including uh, including Minneapolis. Uh, and then you got the enhanced region inside of this. Now, a big question with this also is if storms do fire. For example, there's some models for Iowa where no storms fire up at all with the HRRR model, but it's saying, hey, if they do, there is a risk for not only tornadoes, but some strong tornadoes, which is EF2 or higher, all the way up to EF2, EF5. So you got the 10% risk of a tornado in this region, 25 miles in any given point. And then you got the Hatch region, which is basically you're seeing the black dashes going in between this highlighted yellow region which means uh, also in this 10% region, you have an equal chance, a 10% risk also of a stronger tornado. So need to watch out for it. You know, even watch out Minneapolis a little bit later today than getting into Wisconsin, where I think the storm coverage up in this region will be a little bit more. So wind threat is there, you know, for this large slight risk, elevated wind threat inside this enhanced region, 30% risk in this red area of damaging winds occurring at 25 miles in a given point. Then the health threat, is a uh, 30% risk also. And then you got a hatched region even outside of the northeast end of this um, risk area of a larger hill, 10% region underlapped or overlapped, however you want to say, in this hill risk right here, 10% risk of larger hill occurring of two inch in diameter or higher. So we need to watch out for day. Active, active weather day today for sure. But take a look at water vapor loop. You can see kind of what's going on, this upper trough swinging through. Um, this areas of the country. Then you got the less leftover energy, some convection ongoing in portions of this part of the country, Oklahoma, moving into Missouri. We call this uh, basically an MCV. And basically, just think of it as leftover energy that continues to swirl, even though it might not be popping up uh, convection, showers, and storms. It continues to flow through the atmosphere. And in this case, it'll be kind of a a uh, zonal flow, which means it kind of goes from west to east. And this will drift into Kentucky over the next several hours and refire up convection in Kentucky and then potentially get convection uh, popping off with another piece of energy here in the Carolinas, something we have to watch out for. And then 
big time flow of moisture, low level moisture surges in with a warm front ahead of a cold front all the way into Minnesota, well into Iowa today, which will set the stage for some spinners, some tornadoes, definitely in this region of the country. So let's go on and take a more broader look at what could potentially happen today. This is the HRRR model. Latest long range. We'll keep this going. We'll get into about midday. You already got convection refiring up here in Missouri in response to the leftover energy um, in the south central U.S. and the central plains. You keep this rolling here. Some stronger storms are already beginning to form in areas. Watch out St. Louis a little bit later this afternoon. This leftover energy will fire up and start to move into southern areas of Illinois at the same time. Look, you don't see any storms in Iowa, right? But you see some storms firing up in, in western areas of Wisconsin. And these could produce some very large hail. They really could. So watch out this area of Wisconsin. You guys have had some nasty weather as of late over the last really week. But at the same time, you're, you're, you're keeping your eyes on two different areas, which is kind of hard. But you got this area right here uh, developing. And then you got this area right here beginning to develop. At the same time, if you look really hard in Kentucky, eastern areas of Kentucky, you got a little storm popping up here. This storm could be strong to severe. You got the thermodynamics here popping off big time. Um, you know, the kinematics for a big time tornado potential, definitely not so much there, but you definitely have some dynamics here. And then you got an isolated cell popping up later this afternoon, this evening, in basically the triad areas of North Carolina. But you notice the storm coverage is not much at all in the Carolinas and even in Tennessee and Kentucky. You're really watching this cluster of storms right here and you keep this rolling here and then some more storms would fire up. You know, it's, it's wild. They have the slight risk really down into this area, but really this is starting to get into the overnight hours. So lack of storm coverage is a, is, is something we watch out for today. The NAM has a little bit more coverage, which, which, which is what I'm about to show, but you know, you got the slight risk up. For this region, but the HRRR model doesn't like the idea of a whole lot of convection firing up at the Storm Prediction Center, which are the professionals. Um, based off soundings, they do like the idea of storms popping up. In fact, you look at around 9, 10 p.m., you got storms firing up in eastern areas of the Carolinas, which I know is a little bit harder to see. But you really watch out for this region right here and then up here in Wisconsin. You know, I'll get a little bit closer look at Wisconsin here. Let's find my states um, for my folks in Wisconsin. And these storms could be, you know, pretty dangerous. We need to watch out for these large hail in the middle of Wisconsin. But you notice down here in Iowa, nothing really pops up, but you got an enhanced region up. So it's saying, hey, you know, there's a limiting factor on storm development in this region. But if they do form, you have overlapping of dynamics and you need to really watch out here with a basically a warm front riding up into this region right into here with you know basically two different areas two different directions of winds going against each other puts a spin to the atmosphere obviously and creates these spinnings of these updrafts that we need to watch out for but you know this coverage of storms you know this is this afternoon watch out green bay you know watch out even in northern areas of michigan you know this is the area where the h triple r model likes the idea of a lot of storms popping up here but you know, in North Carolina, for example, where you do have a slight risk of storms, the storm coverage isn't that big at all. You got a couple isolated showers and storms popping up. So it's saying, you know, even in the South Carolina, you got a slight risk up, but absolutely no convection really gets going up per the HRRR model. Could be wrong, though. NAM, a little, a little different. We're getting into this afternoon. You got showers and storms popping up. A little bit more widespread in areas of uh, the western areas and the upstate areas of South Carolina, western areas of North Carolina. A little bit more convection popping up. In fact, some pretty strong storms, maybe some severe storms popping up in and around the Charlotte area and surrounding towns and cities. And then up here, you know, in Wisconsin, southern areas of Minnesota, you got those storms firing up this evening. At the same time, you're watching these clusters of storms too. But I'd say the HRRR model and the NAM look uh, somewhat different. You know, it quickly evolves whatever whatever energy right here that pops up pops off here in these regions, um, right here in southern Minnesota, areas of northeast Iowa, and then areas of Wisconsin, quickly kind of forms it into a line of storms. So congeals it into more of a linear thread as we get into the late evening hours in this region. So it's a big question here, and then it evolves into a big old line of storms. So. We need to just try to figure out what's going to happen today. You know, we can model watch all day, but we really need to see real life. That's why I always mention, you know, download a radar. 
for sure. But, you know, watch this area right here in southern sections of Illinois and Indiana. There could be a, definitely a tornado threat today. And even if any storms get popping off in Kentucky, enough of a mid-level flow, you know, you're probably going to have a isolated threat for a tornado in Kentucky for sure. For my folks here in the Carolinas, you know, if we look, let me get down to North Carolina. Look down here. The NAM does like the idea of some big storms popping up and moving kind of from the northwest to southeast, kind of a northwest flow, if you will, of storms. And these really fire up uh, around Hickory Point South. Watch out, Shelby. And then it wants some big time storms around dinner time and the rush hour for areas like Charlotte, Rock Hill. And these move through, maybe weak and strengthen. But um, I tell you what, there's a lot of areas of the Carolinas that definitely need the rain. But, you know, you look at the dynamics of play here. Big time moisture feed well north. You know, you get the rising of the warm front all the way into the late evening hours. These are dew points rising well into the 60s all the way up into Wisconsin. A little bit of mixing and cool cold pools of air definitely showing up here. But, uh, you know, certainly a lot of low level moisture at play. And when you have that, you have high levels of cape which means here, here's your cape levels, which shows kind of weird pockets of lack of cape, which is that cold pooling we talk about, just more uh, stabilization of the atmosphere. But you got a lot of energy firing up here in the southern sections of the Ohio Valley in the Mid-South, and you got cape levels definitely spiking pockets well above 3,000, 3,500 joules per kilogram at the surface, at the surface, which is not always what we look at. It's just something we look at. So a lot of energy right off here, you know, for sure popping off. We look at everybody else as a whole as far as moisture. The only thing we really watch for is the northeast where we'll have some lingering showers. But this would be not really in the way of storms. Just a kind of, a, not necessarily an all day, but the interior northeast, Vermont, New Hampshire, and then getting into Maine a little bit later this afternoon. Just some widespread rain is definitely possible. Some showers, certainly possible for southern areas of New England that we need to watch out. Then you're just daily pop-up showers and storms for Florida like you guys always see. Very hot day. Very, very warm day. One of the warmest days of the year, especially if you're in the southeast. Temperatures will soar. You can already feel it in the air this morning. It feels like a summer morning here in the Carolinas. Uh, working out this morning, I sweated harder than I have in 2022 so far. <laughs> so it's very warm, very humid out there for sure. And it's going to get all the way into the mid to upper 90s in the Carolinas, portions of Georgia. And for sure, just an all out very warm day, 90s widespread in the deep south. And then just the 80s, you know, all the way in the mid south, area, Ohio Valley, uh, Mississippi Valley, very warm. It stays pretty cool due to the rain cold air up here in the northeast, 40s and 50s for highs. But where it isn't raining, it has the chance for the temperatures to rise a little bit. You can actually see where the warm front is where temperatures and low-level moisture spike in, you know, in response to this warm front rising. So you can see the boundary up here in Minnesota uh, where you have cooler air to the north, warmer and humid air to the south for sure. And then the all-out trough dipping through here, cooling down the Dakotas for sure. You look out west, uh, another system swings through. This sets the stage for a snowstorm for the Rockies, for areas like Denver, a very, very late season snowstorm. Big time cold front starts to surge southward in response. Moisture surges in from the north. This is a classic setup for a big time front range snowstorm. And that will be the case as we're getting into the afternoon and evening hours as moisture begins to funnel into Montana from Canada. And, uh, you know, in response, very warm temperatures ahead of the front. For example, this is around 3 to 4 p.m. this afternoon out west, give or take your time zone. And... You know, you can see where the cold front is surging southward. So it's very interesting to, to see how this unfolds today. You know, I think Denver will get well into the 80s today. And then tomorrow you'll be stuck in the 40s as uh, basically the temperatures will drop all day ahead of snow moving in tomorrow night. But you can see, you can see the trough dipping in from the south for sure as it starts to cut off this very warm temperatures. Cooler than average temperatures to the north. Of the western u.s warmer than average temperatures of the south with a cold front has not influenced the weather that's all i got guys thank you all for tuning in stay safe out there severe weather will be prominent so uh, god bless all y'all i'll talk to y'all this evening